Elena, que lo tengo a burro. Mide. Mide. Oh, como é que eu Bela. Mas como é que Hello friends, uh, welcome back to Familia Pavlanu and I hope you're having a wonderful day. We are a multilingual and multicultural family of seven from Nigeria as well as the US, currently immigrants to the beautiful Pearl of Africa. So are you ready to go on an adventure with us? All right, hold on to your hats and to your, I don't know what, <laughs> it's about to get very, very interesting. So let me first say a big thank you to you joining us for the first time or our returning um, subscribers. Thank you so much for being here, for joining us. And let me just say that we are a multilingual family. And that means that in this video, in the, our vlogs, you will be hearing us speak both Yoruba and Spanish. Um, Pablo will speak Spanish to the kids and I'll speak Yoruba to them. So if you have a friend, if you have friends, family members that speak Spanish or Yoruba, you can call them up and watch this vlog with them or you can send it to them so let's get started so guys picture this you and your family of six left the western definition of comfort zone mama, mama africa, africa your children are home imagine you've come out of a lot of different uh, cultural ideals a lot of different things you've gone through a lot of things and you've come to a point to where you realize that you know what Life is short and we got to enjoy it. And we need to make sure that everything that we do is something that we do for a purpose. So for here, people may look at this as, oh, what are they doing? Why are they in this house? But for us, this is where our children are growing. This is where we are growing. This is where we are learning. And this is where we are healing. Pipas and pepitas. Just roasted them now. Put some some G-nuts too. We're really excited about these. They're very expensive, but... I haven't had these in a while, so... Really excited. Como? Do you want to try it? Rafa, you! Get out Busy Monday. No, it's a Tuesday. Wednesday. No, it's a Wednesday. I'm going to get my tape. Hey, Wednesday. Oh, my dad's grand. What do you say? Oh, pare. What has he said? He said that he is. Oh, mire, ¿qué estás diciendo, hija? Vale. Oh, ok, te cargaré. Oh, Pablo has harvested. Yeah, so the final harvest. I mean, we planted ginas and different beans and stuff all throughout here. Mm -hmm. But um, this is the final uh, banana harvest. Oh. So this looks small, but it's got some good matoki on it. Mm hmm. So we harvested that one, it was about to fall anyways. Okay. This one already fell, which is why it's too small. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna get like little fingerling <laughs> out of that. And then these are uh, chisui. Hey. So this one was quite big. I cut it down with one chop. I wish you could have cut that on video. But, oh, uh, the children will love it. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Massive sucker. But luckily the ground was soft enough because it had been raining. That it, was, mm. it didn't break anything. But yeah, big chunks. So these generally they make alcohol out of, mm. but because um, they're not super sweet, but the kids eat them, they like them. And you can make some good, uh, what do you call that? Kabbala if you want to. Mm. Banana pancake. Them. Yeah, local Oil pancake. Oil free. <laughs> eh, with, uh, uh, what do you call it? Millets. Oh Millet yeah, flour. yeah. Mm. But, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. So then we'll be coming back once the beans are ready and mm -hmm. harvest some of those. We also planted some uh, plantain trees and um, a few other a few other things. We have pawpaw growing over there, cassava that we planted. So over there. We'll be coming down here to check out every once in a while. And, mm -hmm. and the jackfruit, of course. Yep. The jackfruit, everyone just takes the jackfruit. Hola, mi day. Tienes seis meses ya. Hola, hola. <laughs> she saw the camera. Hello. Hello. That's a fever. 
So guys, before we immigrated to the part of Africa, I one of my biggest uh, fear was getting sick with malaria. I was like, how would we do it? Even though I grew up in Nigeria, I've had malaria many, many times. So before coming to Uganda, I researched it and uh, the leading cause of mortality for kids under five after diarrhea is malaria so i was looking at what would happen if we have malaria and yeah boom a few months after we came here we got malaria we were sick but we were fine it was as if we had covid um on and off fever for a week and we were fine we were able to eat all the fresh fruits and vegetable and we were fine so you see me giving orange to baby me day here she is our orange baby. She's always loved orange. She's been taking orange since she was two months old. So I figured out that giving fruit boosts the immune and they are able to take at least that even when they're sick. She has high fever right now. I give her some oranges and I actually thought she had malaria because her core was hot. Turns out um, later on we figure out it wasn't malaria. It was H. pylori. And before you start judging about unsanitary whatnot for H. pylori in the U.S., I work in a medical system there and a lot of kids, infants, we test infants for H. pylori. Why would children have it? To, yes, it's 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 uh, very prevalent than you think. Yeah, right here, she's very fuzzy. She's eating um, 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 passion fruit, but she was just, her gut is just very hurting and she has a fever from it. So big thank you to our father-in-law as well as those who commented mentioning about the Sato toilet, which is what we installed here, that blue thing, as you can see. Uh, so if you watched our previous videos, um, the original toilet here was just a hole in the ground, uh, which we're used to. Um, that's pretty much the, the general way it is around here in most places, especially public toilets. So we were used to it, but it's not so nice um, when the smell is there and flies are coming out and all that. So... Uh, these Sato toilets were excellent. Um, as you can see, the children were very excited <laughs> and they were pouring out their nighttime buckets, uh, which are like bedpans. So guys, this pit latrine has changed our life for the best. Um, guys, if you've never done this, please, maybe you can try it. Give it a try and leave it in the comment section. When you're using your water closet, sit on it as if you're using a, a pit latrine as in raise the plastic part up and, and and squat on top of it, stand on top of the toilet and then squat and see how fast you will go. Guys, and leave a comment in the section and, and tell us what you think. Oh, there we go. Muy bien. Oh, está caliente. Oh, está caliente. Cuidado. Uh, está caliente. Soplale. Uh, <laughs> muy bien, Rafa. He's blowing on it. Mm. Eh, mire, está comiendo bien. Ah, está bebiendo la. So we were on our way to a spot where we usually do work, and I looked and I saw some kids from school singing at this church and i was like wait a second is that bella or elena and elena that i just see so i took a video of them apparently their school go there like every uh once a week or so they go there and they sing so mama what are you doing in here oh it is so dark oh, hola, oh you can't see eh? <laughs> no i can see oh, it's okay. just very dark yeah, I'm oh to emotion garden i'm them together. So guys, I finally have my mushroom garden uh, all set up. Now let me tell you a funny story about getting this mushroom garden. So actually I called the lady that I usually make them and it came from a long way, about two hours away. And they'll put it in Boda and they put it in a taxi that'll come to our small town here. And I went to the taxi pack to get them. And I got to the taxi pack, I called this guy, okay, oh my mushroom garden, okay, here they are. And this guy next to this, uh, the taxi driver was like, was saying something to the other guy in Luganda. I'm like, ah, sorry, say my name Luganda. And they were like, oh, really? Hey, okay. He's saying that you are very beautiful. I'm like, oh, thank you. Like, okay, are you from uh, Jaman? Germany? I'm like, no, Eva, Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. Like, hey, very beautiful. You're beautiful. I'm like, <laughs> Thank you. And the thing is, I didn't bring any child with me, so I wanted to tell them I don't. I have five kids, but I didn't. We live off grid yeah. in the Pearl of Africa. Of course, we don't have indoor plumbing, and we wash our dishes like this. 
Ya, terkabo. Come on, come so you might be wondering how our kids are so willing uh, to be doing this and the answer is probably because they don't do it every single day so uh, we have two two young ladies that you've probably seen that help us out with different things during the week just to make sure that the household runs smoothly even when we're here with uh, five kids six and under it's uh, quite a task so them helping out is a big big help uh, now on their off day uh, that and also in the evenings when, when they're not there we have to do a lot of the washing ourselves. So sometimes we say, hey, children, can you help us out with this? Especially if it's not bedtime yet, uh, like it is here. And they jump in. And Tulio has a bit of fun uh, dumping his head uh, every once in a while. And uh, But yeah, they're very efficient. And we never taught them, but they just jump right in and they start doing an assembly line of washing and, and, uh, and what is it, rinsing and drying and all that. It's amazing to see. And we're glad that uh, when they get older, they'll be able to help out more and more uh, in the future. So these are good skills for them to have. And now that they're able to finally <laughs> reach to wash the dishes, um, they're learning it at a young age, which is great. So they'll be able to help more and more as they grow older. <laughs> And off he goes, dunking his head again. Oh, Tulio, Tulio, Tulio. <laughs> we live off grid in the borough of Africa. Of course, we don't have indoor plumbing and we wash up like this. Enjuagate las manos. Enjuagate las. Using rainwater like this is a lot more economical and also eco-friendly way of teaching children at a young age about water conservation. And our little guy is becoming an expert. No, 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 la frente, la boca, la boca. Okay. Enjuagate las manos. Especialmente el dedo, el pulgar. Ahora, cierra el agua. Oh, look at my baby. He's growing up. He's two years old. He speaks currently three languages. And it's just it's just amazing to watch him grow up. Oh, that one. We live off grid in the Pearl of Africa. Of course we don't have a lawnmower. So I told Pablo I want to give this um, this slasher uh, um, a try, and he said, "Oh yeah, just get a feel for it." And he's so excited. He he hasn't um, seen one before until we came to Uganda. Um, he researched and found a scythe. Anything something closer to this would be a scythe. And before it was shipped, I think when we we're in the U.S., when we he got one in Indiana, it was shipped from Canada and then to Toronto. I don't even know. Anyways. But I give it a try. It wasn't as easy as it looked. And it makes it look so easy. So while Pablo slashes back there, I don't know if you can see him. Now I'm getting uh, hot water ready for um, washing the girl's hair to wash their, their scalp with uh, vinegar and water. So let me show you guys how we do it. Now, guys, uh, you know that uh, that's how we collect uh, rainwater. We use rainwater for cooking as well as for um, drinking. And now for washing our hair because um, oh, for washing our body and for hair, too. I figured um, the city water has too much chlorine, just like reeking in chlorine and it just damages our hair. So I'm using this kettle to get some water, which I'll then take to 
the outside kitchen, we have this tiny little gas um, cooker, which I will then boil this water on so that we can wash the girl's hair. Um, and um, we wash their hair once a week. They don't need much washing. I just spray it during the week and style it and put some shea butter. Um, guys, we stopped using shampoo. We stopped using product on the hair. And our hair has never been so healthy. White vinegar. So from the daddy perspective, I have been privy to a lot of hair washing, a lot of hair braiding, a lot of hair styling, a lot of hair everything. And um, what I've seen over the years is that Elena... Uh, even when she was just a little baby, she was quite the water girl. Um, now she still needs to learn how to swim, but uh, besides that, she's always enjoyed uh, the water in bathtubs, etc., and, and getting her hair washed and everything. She's, she's been quite a trooper, even with this one, which from this far away I could still smell the vinegar, so it was quite strong. But, um, but yeah, Elena, she's always been really, really good with that. Uh, Bella, you will not see her anywhere. She's not going to be in sight in this video because she absolutely hates anyone touching her hair in any sort of way, which is why we cut it short so many times over the years because ever since she was a little one, she just can't stand it and will scream and scream and scream. So that's why you won't see her. But Elena, she's always been quite the trooper and she really enjoys it. Guys, this is the first time I'm trying the vinegar wash, and let's just say I'll never ever wash with vinegar. I'll never wash with anything than just really, really warm water ever again. It made the hair so coarse, and it feels like I had shampoo to it. It's the same effect as having washing my hair with shampoo. So we wash with water alone, really, really warm water, and it's been doing great for our hair. It's growing so well. It's no longer breaking. It's been healthy. <laughs> So yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick with that. No more vinegar from here on. What? I, yeah, I tried with my hair. He took all of the oils out. We never upgrade here in the Pearl Market. Of course we don't have indoor plumbing. We use the outside pit latrine here. Another great way to potty train is having a pit latrine. And of course, the updates that we made, as I already mentioned, are even more helpful. <laughs> La lluvia rociaba los cristales de las gafas de Harry, como demonios iba a ver a la de Snitch en aquellas condiciones. Los de Hufflepuff se aproximaron desde el otro extremo del campo, con la túnica amarillo canario. Los capitanes de ambos equipos se acercaron y se estrecharon la mano. Diggory sonrió a Wood, pero Wood parecía tener ahora la mandíbula encajada y se limitó a hacer un gesto con la cabeza. Harry vio que la boca de la señora Hutch articulaba ¡Monten en las escobas! <laughs> Harry sacó del barro el pie derecho. So guys, if you know us, you know that we use tomatoes a lot. We use our tomatoes too and we eat it with most of our meals. And we just had to stop because of the neurotoxic effect that I know the pesticides, um, there's a lot of pesticide on it. And uh, yeah, it's affecting us and we just have to stop and we, ha we haven't found an alternative, but we will figure it out. We will figure it out indeed. What do you have Oh, show you another. So we might have uh, shown this before, but has anyone seen a bird like this before? It sticks its beak all the way into the ground. And it makes the loudest noises you can imagine. It will scare the heck out of you if you're not even noticing and suddenly hear Rawr! It will wake you up. We live up good here in the Pearl of Africa. Of course we don't have indoor plumbing. We bake like this. <laughs> So this right here takes me back to my childhood. I grew up in the rural Nigeria for the most part of my growing up uh, and uh, I never knew what water heater it was and uh, we used kettle, we used rainwater and all this stuff and uh, that was my childhood, that was normal.
So we don't always bathe outside, but uh, sometimes if the weather's nice and all we're doing is washing hair, why not? You know what I mean? And especially because we use uh, rainwater, which uh, we hope is even better because it doesn't have chlorine or anything like that in it. Um, so we're hoping that'll be a bit uh, less rough on our hair and our skin and things like that. Um, because I know there are people who do take out the chlorine to make it a little bit better. So this is already done for us. And so we have quite a lot of, of uh, rainwater right now that, they were, that we're entering the rainy season. Um, so that's what we're using. And then, of course, you know, we'll heat up some water separately and then uh, mix it together so it's nice and warm and just the right temperature for our little baby girl. One thing that we've gotten out of a lot is uh, the consumerism of the West, which took us about, uh, I think we're still getting out of it, actually, but uh, it's been a year already in the Pearl of Africa, and I think we've, uh, we've been able to kind of uh, pare down quite a bit on our, uh, the things that we own and the things that we feel like we have to have or have to buy, and especially moving to this home has helped even more because we really want to be paring down a, a lot before we finally uh, settle in our forever home. And living in this house has been a really good way uh, to kind of train ourselves in the different skills of how to live basically, you know, how to live just with a bare minimum and then kind of building up on that. I mean, having no running water in the house, you know, seemed like, like a big uh, challenge uh, and having to bathe um, either inside or outside, but without running water um, has not really been too bad. I mean, it's, it's actually quite healthy. It's very enjoyable and... Those who've, who've ever uh, showered outside can attest to that. On a nice day, it's rather like being at a spa. I mean, when the sun is shining like this, it's reminiscent of being, of kind of showering under a small waterfall in a kind of paradise jungle <laughs> scene. It's, it's very nice, especially when you're seeing the, the matoke banana trees right there. Uh, it's very, very nice. I, I enjoy it. We never cook in the Pearl of Africa. Of course we do our cooking in the outdoor kitchen. This is very common in Uganda to have an outdoor kitchen just because of the smoke and whatnot because people often use charcoal. Now, although we have charcoal as a backup, we don't hardly ever use it uh, because it's not very sustainable. And even the, the sustainable ones that they use, the, the type of trees that they keep uh, planting, which is eucalyptus, have a lot of eucalyptus oil, if you've heard of that before. Um, it is not good for the lungs. In the Pearl of Africa, of course we don't have indoor plumbing. We wash our clothes like this. Guys, I've been washing clothes like this, hand washing, since I was maybe six, seven years old, since I started primary one. And it was all on me. If I don't wash my school uniform and if I have to go to school, uh, next day dirty clothes, I will, you will be put out um, in front of the assembly to for the other kids to see uh, how... So you remember the shame to wash your clothes. So I've always washed my clothes by hand. The first time I saw a washing machine when we arrived in the U.S., I was 15 years old, and I saw it at uh, my dad's house. Um, I I didn't know how to use it. I remember putting, is it um, dishwashing detergent or uh, I put the liquid soap inside and it overflew and there was so much foam. I was I was in, in, in shock. Like I thought I broke it and the foam was just coming out. The lather was coming out. And I called my dad. He said, oh yeah, you put too much soap next time. Just put this measurement. Guys, that was mind blowing for me. And that was the end of me washing stuff by hand. And we still wash underwears by hand, even in the US. But um, that was a new experience. It's it's amazing that our children get to see this other side of it. That, um, yeah, they're world, a part of the world where they don't know what washing machine is and they use washing by hand. And it's something you have to learn. And it's amazing. It's, it's a sort of freedom, you know, because when the machine machine stops working, What's going to happen? You know, you need to learn how to use your hands. Yeah, that's how it has always been. It's efficient. Well, efficient-ish. But it's what... Yeah, sus self-sustainability, I suppose. I remember yeah. back then that I hated washing towels because we used big, big towels. Oh, my gosh. If I had to wash it, I because I couldn't wrinkle it to dry, I had to call my sister to help me out with it. Oh, that was an, around seven years old, eight years old. Yeah, my hand was really small for that. But the towels and big clothes were my bane back then. I hated those. Yeah, but uh, oh, these kids will never know what it's like to have big towels that you have to wash by hand. Oh, my goodness. Anyways, it's 
it, it, it's amazing. Have you ever, you guys, please leave in the comment section. Do you wash by hands or do you wash with the mach washing machine? Please let, let us know in the comment section. And by the way, for any of you who are thinking that, oh, this is terrible, having children wash their own clothing and put it on the line, well, that's actually quite a common skill that a lot of children around here have. Um, those children that go to boarding school, they have to absolutely wash their own clothing um, and hang it out to dry and all that. They have to take care of that. They have to learn, you know, their personal hygiene and taking care of themselves at a, as a fairly young age. Um, and that's pretty normal around here. Um, and a lot of people might say, oh, save them from that. Give them washers and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, we probably will at some point. I mean, we already do have one that we use um, for the most part. But these are skills that, you know, should be learned. And here we're just, I don't know, we just feel more free to, to teach our children these things and to do them ourselves as well. And uh, because other people do them around here on a daily basis. So for us, it's like, hey, we need to learn these things, and our children do too. We shouldn't shelter them from much-needed skills of learning and living, and never to feel like they're above doing such work. That way, even if we have people helping us out and, and doing this work for us or with us, our children can join right in and see it as valid work and not something to look down on. How do you do behind? Oh, that's what I mean. You can hold it in the floor. Oh, I can do it. I just turn it. Straight. Mm -hmm. One by one, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We live off-grid here in the Pearl of Africa. Of course we don't have grocery stores. And this is where we get our produce. Mm -hmm.